now directly to the, um, the next topic, which is Dr. Ahmad Tarhini. He's one of our um, medical oncologists, um, and uh, he is going to talk about these uh, exact issues that I was uh, speaking of. When do we use drug treatment after surgery? And now, when do we use drug treatment before surgery? Come on. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right, so we're going to focus on adjuvant and neoadjuvant therapy uh, for what we call high risk melanoma. We're going to talk about this in detail. Uh, <clears throat> these are my disclosures. And, you know, I'm going to start first with a kind of a brief introduction to melanoma stages. We're going to talk about what we call stages two and three melanoma, which are candidates for the so called adjuvant and neoadjuvant. Therapy. Uh, melanoma staging depends on the first on the primary tumor. Stages one and two uh, is when the uh, melanoma is on the skin, and the stage is defined by the depth. How deep does it invade into the skin, and uh, whether it is ulcerated? See this erosion uh, in the uh, in the top of the skin. So stages two B and two C that we are interested in for our discussion are the ones that have relatively deep tumor and may or may not be ulcerated as shown here. Now, stage three is melanoma when it spreads from the skin to the lymph nodes, which act like filters. So we call it uh, regionally advanced melanoma. The cancer has spread into the lymph nodes and that's what we call stage three as shown there. And then stage four is when melanoma has spread from the primary site, from the skin, either to distant lymph nodes or other organs, like the lungs, the liver, the brain, etc. Our discussion will focus mainly on stages 2B, 2C, and stage 3. Now, here's the, you have an idea, what's the incidence of those different stages, okay? Most patients have stage 1, 75%, and about 15% uh, have stage 2. Out of these, about 7% are stages 2B and 2C. And then we have about 7.5% have stage three and 2.5% have stage four. Now, what is the risk? Now we're calling, we're calling stage 2B and 2C and stage three as high risk, why? For stages 2B and 2C and above, the risk of recurrence over uh, five years is at least 35%, that's stage 2B. And it increases as the stage increases. And these are the survival rates here. So for those who are, you know, is in stage 2B uh, to C and stage 3 and who are candidates for surgery, we remove the tumor and consider it at high risk of melanoma recurrence at five years. They are candidates for what we call adjuvant therapy. And then for the subgroup, uh, which is 3B, 3C, and 3D, which, who also about 50% of them may also come in with uh, palpable or detectable uh, lymph nodes. Uh, either clinically or by imaging. And these are candidates for what we call neoadjuvant therapy or upfront systemic therapy. So adjuvant therapy is post-operative after surgery systemic treatment for patients who are considered at high risk for melanoma recurrence. And neoadjuvant th therapy is upfront induction systemic therapy for patients with clinically detectable uh, disease uh, that undergo surgery and then followed by what we call adjuvant therapy. Now, adjuvant therapy of melanoma, historically, <coughs> the first agent uh, approved by the FDA to treat melanoma is what we call interferon alpha. So that's HDIFN, that's high dose interferon. It was approved in 1995. Followed in 2011 by agulated interferon alpha, another form of interferon alpha. These were the first drugs that we <coughs> used to treat patients with high risk of recurrence after surgery, adjuvant therapy, but they had relatively limited, let's say, activity, plus they were toxic and had significant impact on the quality of life of these patients. We're looking for newer agents. And, you know, thankfully, there have been a lot of, let's say, uh, 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 work and research that have deepened our understanding of the melanoma biology <coughs> and the patient immunology and made us learn that patients with uh, uh, an immune system, and we have these, cer these cells that we call T cells that act like the soldiers of the immune system, their activation against the tumor is driven by a balance by, between different signals. The top, the top, yeah. Yeah. Between different signals. 
so-called positive signals that activate this soldier, this T cell, and negative sig signals that inhibit the T cell. So medications or so-called antibodies or monoclonal antibodies have been developed that can manipulate, you know, either stimulate the T cell or inhibit those, you know, negative signals again to stimulate the T cell so it can make more T cells that can fight the cancer. Now, what have made it to the clinic today in melanoma are medications that target CTLA-4, PD-1, and LAG-3. And it was no surprise that the Nobel Prize in Medicine in 2018 uh, was given to James Allison and Tasuku Honjo for their work on the uh, CTLA-4 and PD-1 biology that translated into medications that you know, impacted the care of our patients. Now, just to get a little bit deeper into this, you know, so this is the T cell, that's the soldier, this is the cancer cell. What happens first in the lymph node is this dendritic cell programs the T cell. And we have an interaction between the uh, dendritic cell and the T cell and activates the T cell. T cell is ready now to go and fight the cancer, but then we have CDLA4 inhibiting its activity. So we have medications, uh, for example, in melanoma epilimumab that blocks this interaction, allows the T cell to go all the way to the site of the cancer and now interact and fight the cancer cell. When it gets there, now we have the PD-1, the other negative signal that the cancer cell can take advantage of to inhibit the T cell activity. And here again, we have medications that inhibit this interaction, allow the T cell to do its job at the level of the cancer cell. So starting with targeting CTLA-4 in melanoma, the drug epilimumab, the first study that tested adjuvant therapy, again, after surgery, uh, is this study called EORTC18071. Basically, patients with a stage three melanoma were randomized. They either received epilimumab for a year or received a placebo. And the study was, was positive as shown in the separation of the curves, blue meaning uh, the medication epilimumab, red is placebo, and patients had improvement in lowering the risk of the cancer recurrence and improvement in their survival in favor of epilimumab, leading to its approval by the FDA at a dose which was relatively high at the time, 10 milligram per kilogram, which was actually too toxic. We did not use much of epilimumab because of its toxicity at the time. There's a lot of side effects that resulted from it. So we conducted a study in the, uh, here, uh, an NCI-sponsored study that I served as the national chair is E1609, where we looked at epilimumab based on prior data at a lower dose of three milligram per kilogram, and also the 10 milligram per kilogram, and compared it to the interferon alpha. And we found that the lower dose of epilimumab, three milligram per kilogram, was superior to interferon alpha in terms of overall survival. It was a strong trend in terms of recurrence-free survival as well. Importantly, we found no difference between the higher dose 10 or lower dose 3 milligram per kilogram in terms of the clinical outcomes, meaning it was as effective based on this study. Mm -hmm. And the toxicity was much less in the lower <clears throat> dose compared to the higher dose, so supported in cases where we have to use it as adjuvant therapy that we probably should use the lower dose, the 3 milligram per kilogram. Next is you know, the data that came with targeting PD-1. So pembrolizumab and nivolumab, both approved by the FDA for the treatment of uh, you know, high-risk melanoma, stage three melanoma after surgery. The first study, this one shown here, Checkmate 238, tested nivolumab versus the epilimumab. And this study was positive in favor of PD-1. So now we have learned that uh, 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 nivolumab is better than epilimumab and was also significantly less toxic as well, leading to its approval by the FDA. So now we rarely use epilimumab as adjuvant therapy. We use nivolumab. Now we did not see improvement in survival between the patients as part of the study when comparing these two, you know, essentially active drug, but, but the risk of recurrence free survival was significantly improved. So definitely it is a superior medication. Similarly, a similar study, Keynote, Keynote 054, tested pembrolizumab, you know, the other PD-1 medication. 
And this study compared to placebo, as we've seen in the prior study, was also significantly positive. So pembrolizumab was better than placebo, again, significantly reducing the risk of uh, recurrence, improved recurrence-free survival, leading to its approval by the FDA. So as I said, we have now both pembrolizumab and nivolumab approved by the FDA for stage three melanoma as adjuvant therapy. But these are, as I said, associated with side effects. We have activation of the immune system to fight the, the, the uh, cancer, the melanoma. And this also the, uh, leads to the immune system affecting normal tissues that can affect any organ in the body. And as I said, the risk was higher with epilumab and lower with anti uh, one. So these are things that we keep an eye on, obviously, when we treat with these medications and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, to manage the patients. Now, moving away from immunotherapy, what about the tumor biology? What about targeting defects within the cancer cell based on the tumor biology? So if this is the uh, cancer cell here, the cancer cells are driven by certain pathways that stimulate their survival. So one cell divides, becomes two, two become four, four become eight, etc. In melanoma, about 50% of patients with melanoma, um, their melanomas have a defect, a mutation in the DNA of a protein called BRAF, as shown here. So the, this mutation or this defect in this genetic code <laughs> results in this abnormal protein that now acts like an engine which is firing out of control. Regardless of upward stimulation, usually a normal cell, you have stimu this stimulates this, stimulates this, etc., and then the cell grows. Here, it's an engine firing out of control, right? And the cell is growing and dividing and making more cancer cells. So we have medications, so-called BRAF inhibitors, that can block this uh, protein or kinase uh, or, or abnormal engine. And we have learned that if we have two blocks, so we block BRAF and the protein below it, back, you have even better activity. And this was tested in, uh, you're taking a photo? Uh, yeah. You, oh, should I wait? No, you're good. good. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. <clears throat> All right. So, so, so the study, the next study, tested the BRAF inhibitor, dabrafenib, and the MEK inhibitor, tramatinib, also as adjuvant therapy, also for stage three melanoma, and compared it to uh, placebo. And the study was also positive, was significantly better than placebo in recurrence-free survival, leading to its approval by the FDA. When looking at the overall survival, also a strong trend was not statistically significant, but a strong trend in favor of treatment. The side effects are different from those that we see with immunotherapy. Uh, these may include fever, fatigue, nausea, headache, chills, diarrhea, mostly manageable. Although in about 25% of patients, we may have to stop short of the planned treatment, which is usually a year. All these medications uh, are given for a year. About 25% here, we have to stop short of a year. With the immunotherapy, it's roughly about 10% may have to stop short of a year because of the side effects. Now, next is the stages 2B and 2C. So the lymph node is negative, but we said we have 2B and 2C, risk of recurrence over five years, with the 2B is roughly about 35%, with the 2C roughly about 40%. And this is the study, the so-called Keynote 716, that tested pembrolizumab, the PD-1 antibody versus placebo, and the study was positive in favor of, of the pembrolizumab, leading to its approval by the FDA. So this is now available in the clinic and we're, we're offering it to patients with the stages 2B and 2C. <laughs> More recently, uh, the other drug, the other PD-1 drug, nivolumab, was also tested in this study called 76K, also compared to placebo, the same endpoint recurrence-free survival, and the study was positive. So this is, uh, you know, again, kind of supports the activity of these PD-1 antibodies in patients with a stage 2B and 2C melanoma as an option that, you know, can be offered in the clinic. 
So, you know, moving on next to neoadjuvant therapy. So I said this is the distribution of, uh, of the different stages of hemoglobin. <coughs> now, for those patients that belong to stage three and present with bulky disease that we said, maybe the surgery is too morbid. Maybe the surgery may not, you know, help these, uh, you know, maybe the surgery is, uh, should be delayed, you know, after upfront treatment. We estimate based on prior studies, for example, this study that tested pembrolizumab and this study that uh, uh, we conducted uh, with epilimumab versus interferon, we found that, you know, what we call macroscopic lymph nodes, meaning those that we can see them on the CT scan or those that we can palpate them on the physical exam, uh, are about 50% roughly of the stage three. So 50% of these 7.5% may present with these bulky diseases that possibly maybe we should try immunotherapy before, stimulate the immune system or targeted therapy before, uh, kind of shrink the tumor, potentially make the surgery easier. And that's what we've been doing. So I, you know, kind of conducted the first ever anti, you know, CTRA4 or so-called immune checkpoint inhibitor neoadjuvant study that we published at the time in 2014 with a drug called Epilumab. And a lot of work has been done by our uh, group and by many others looking at this neoadjuvant approach in many studies. Recently reported very promising data with this combination. This is a national study which is ongoing as well. And there is a lot of, you know, very exciting data that came out of it. In a small study, relatively speaking, with pembrolizumab, nivolumab, epilumab plus nivolumab, and relatumab plus nivolumab. So meaning what we do here is we do, we see the patient with bulky disease. We, give, we enter them into the so-called neoadjuvant phase. We give treatment upfront. Right? And then we wait for a certain period. It could be six weeks, could be 10 weeks, 12 weeks, depending on the study. Next is the surgery phase. So we get neoadjuvant phase. Next is the surgery phase where we do the surgery, usually watching the tumor, ensuring it is responding to the treatment, followed by the, after surgery, by the adjuvant phase in most patients. So we have the neoadjuvant phase, surgery phase, and adjuvant phase. And you know, this has been a, an important topic and discussion, let's say nationally, started in melanoma and has been you know, spreading across many other malignancies. The National Cancer Institute Early Drug Development team asked me you know, last year to uh, invite a, a group of investigators from other cancers, those that test had a neck cancer and lung cancer and GI cancer and so on, where we put together a workshop and you know, published a, what we call a position paper now, uh, uh, inviting everybody to test neoadjuvant immunotherapy in solid tumors across different malignancies and provided guidance how to design these studies and the endpoints and so on. Importantly, in melanoma, in this landmark study that Dr. Sondak uh, played a leading role in, it was just published in the top medical journal, New England Journal of Medicine, uh, patients were, uh, you know, this study was conducted by the Southwestern Oncology Group, and patients with bulky disease were randomized to either get adjuvant treatment, meaning we just have surgery up front and get 18 cycles of the PD-1 inhibitor, pembrolizumab, or enter the neoadjuvant phase, meaning you get three cycles of pembrolizumab over three weeks, meaning over a nine-week period, followed by surgery, followed by 15 cycles of pembrolizumab as new adjuvant therapy. The main endpoint that they looked at is event-free survival. So progression or toxicity, failure to begin the adjuvant therapy within a certain period of time, melanoma recurrence after surgery, or death from any cause. The study was positive in favor of new adjuvant therapy. It came on top, meaning, and this is a grand national randomized study for the first time, now demonstrating head-to-head -head significant improvement with neoadjuvant therapy over adjuvant therapy, all right? So these are now my conclusions. So adjuvant trials of PD-1 with nivolumab and pembrolizumab and BRAF back inhibitors, specifically the BRAF and trematinib, have now changed the standard of care for stage three to significant recurrence-free survival improvements. This is the standard of care in the clinic. Significant also recurrence-free survival improvements with adjuvant anti-PD-1 has been seen in stages 2B and 2C 
with both pembrolizumab and nivolumab. Important to say that pembrolizumab is currently approved by the FDA. Nivolumab is under review by the FDA. It's not approved yet. <clears throat> New adjuvant therapy, in my opinion, has become the standard of care for these patients with local regionally advanced melanoma. Now, ongoing studies by our group and others will define what we call the most optimal combination regimens in the near future. Biomarkers, biomarker-driven patient selection for, and for adjuvant and new adjuvant therapy is an area of active investigation. We have a lot of work in this area, and we believe this will also become, change the standard of care in the coming uh, few years. Thank you. So again, everything we've talked about so far in this, uh, this morning's uh, presentations has been about the patients who've come in with melanoma localized either to the skin or the lymph nodes, trying to predict who was at high risk and treat them appropriately. After the break, after the Q&A session, we were going to talk about patients where the melanoma has already spread, how we treat them today, how we're going to treat them in the future.